Hi, Johnny here from johnnylipsomstudios.co.uk and welcome to Studio 1.6. So yes, Studio 1.6 is finally here and that is so tremendously exciting for me personally and I'm sure it is exciting for you guys as well. Now, I have to admit, it's been so hard keeping this a secret because I've known about this for a wee while and um so keeping it under wraps has been tough but here we are finally celebrating the launch of studio on six so i need to uh, before we get into the video just explain what this video is for this video is an overview of some of the key features of studio on six and some of the new things that that we now have in studio on six uh, i'm not going to go into a lot of depth on each of these features. I'm not going to explore them very, very thoroughly. I want to keep this as a short little overview to give you a whistle-stop tour of what we have in Studio One Six. There'll be some features that I'm not going to go into very much at all because I'm going to have some in-depth standalone videos that will cover those features in a little bit more detail. Um, because some of them are a little bit more involved than others. And so those ones I want to kind of set aside so that I can go into those in depth in a separate video. I want to keep this overview video relatively short so that it just gives you a flavor of what there is. And then you can go and try those things out that you see in uh, this video for yourself. That's the general idea. So why don't we get into it? All right, so welcome to the start page in Studio One Six, which, as you can see, has already had a considerable facelift, and there are some new buttons. And I'm sure that most of you, your eye is being drawn straight to this one over here, especially if you are a Persona Sphere member. And you would be correct by being drawn to this immediately, because this is the new collaboration features built directly into Studio One. Now, I am going to pass over this for the sake of this video um, so that we keep this overview video to a reasonable length and I am making a special standalone video for the collaboration features in Studio One Six. Um, uh, so please do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a thing from this Studio One Six series. So I just wanted to get that out of the way right now that um, we're not really going to talk about the collaboration features in this overview video. But as I say, there will be a standard, a standalone video for that. So don't worry about it. You can, as soon as you finish watching this video, you can go straight to it and you can see what is available for you as a Personosphere member. If you're not a Personosphere member, that's fine. You can kind of pass over that. That's good. All right. So let's get into th the new look and feel of Studio One Six. And as you can see, everything has been a little bit more rounded around the edges cosmetically, which is really nice to see. But we've also consolidated all of these buttons, ignoring the join one for now, as I say. We now have a single new document button and an open existing document button. Um, instead of having those different buttons that we had along the top in previous versions of Studio One. And we still retain these um, lists for songs, projects, and shows, as well as the, re the recent files list. Uh, and as you can see, um, there is this shared option here, which is related to this collaboration feature. But if we go up to the other corner here, you'll now see that there is a home-shaped icon for the start page. And then this documents um, button here. This is very cool because there used to be several buttons here. There used to be um, start page, song page, project page, show page buttons. And we've consolidated those into a single button, which is very, very cool. So um, as you can see, there is one page, but there are like a couple kind of tucked underneath it. This means that there are multiple documents open at the moment, which there are. And if I want to see what those are and select one, I can right click and this will show me what songs are currently open. And it would also say if there was a project open or a show open as well. They would they are listed as songs, as projects and as shows. Um, so these are the ones that I have 
open at the moment and I can easily access that list there and I can click on any one of those to open the, uh, those songs, which we will get to in just a minute. But that is a particularly cool feature. It's one of my favorites. And then we've got this little transfers button here. So when you are installing things from your account, um, you will see this happen. And then you can also click on this to see what has been transferred and, you know, has it been successful or has it failed? Or, you know, if you wanted to see when did I install that particular thing, you can click on this and it will tell you. And then next to that, we've got this avatar, which is your avatar from your My Personas or uh, Persona Sphere um, account. And when you click on this, you can sign out to Studio One or you can edit your profile. You can do some basic editing of your profile. This link will take you straight to your account when you click on it, which is very cool. And um, there is some more detail on this, which uh, we'll come to when we get talking about the collaboration fee. Uh, the collaboration features in that standalone video. Um, but needless to say, that is all very, very cool. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at on staying on the start page is the artist profile that we have always had since day one, I think, um, is still here, but it's been updated. So now if I click on this little um, paper icon here, it says uh, artist presets. So this is very cool. If I click on this, I can add another artist profile or I can select a second one or multiple ones that um, I might have. So if you are working with multiple um, artists or you have multiple clients that you send work out to on a regular basis, you can create a profile specifically for that client or for that artist, whomever it is. and. What that does is that allows basic metadata that you've always been able to have in the artist profile be able to go um, with songs that uh, are associated with that profile. So for example, this is my personal one, and then I've got this one for my day job at Personas, Personas logo, support, and personas.com website. So anything that I do under here um, will have that. And of course I can put in here um, whatever my genre is. So I could say in, in my day job, I could say I'm a rock guy, which I'm not really, I'm a jazz guy, um, but I could put that there. And then this met metadata would, um, would basically go out on any exports that I do um, automatically. But of course, even when you're um, exporting your mix down, you can adjust all of that data uh, if you want to, or you can just change the artist profile. So I'm going to go back to this one, mostly because I want to I want you guys to see my pretty face. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing that we've got here. Um, if I click on the songs uh, tab here, notice how we now have a whole bunch of folders, which is very, very cool. But this is even cooler. If I was to select one of these and right click it, notice now I get information about the track. And also look down here, move to new folder, or I can move this to an existing folder. And as you can see, this little pop out appears with some folders. And if I have nested folders, I can select those as well. And I can move this song um, to a different folder. So if I want to consolidate some songs and add them to, let's say this case, Pete Lowe's album, I've got some folders here already and I can select one of those folders and I can move that song to one of these folders, um, which is extremely cool. I really, really like this feature. Um, and then I've got multiple songs folders here that I can have access to uh, and I can move the song to any of these at any time. So that's really cool. And it helps you to be able to organize um, your songs into folders. Um, and then, of course, as I say, you've got access to um, any of these other songs in folders packed away together. So this is really, really cool. So that Pete Lowe's album folder is all here. And then there's some standalone songs from that record that I made many years back with my dear friend Pete Lowe, who is awesome. Shout out to him if he's watching. And then you can do the same with projects. Um, now, in this particular case, I can't really show that. Um, because I don't have a, a pro any kind of projects 
um, in folders at the moment, but I can create a new folder. So I, I could click on this and that would create a new folder. And then I could move any of these guys to that folder, which would be um, very cool. So if I wanted to put all of these projects into one folder, let's say it's I've done mastering for one particular client, then I can create a folder for that client, knowing that if I'm doing mastering for him again, the next time I have a project for him or her, then it's dead easy. Then I can just add that project to that client's list and they'll have projects going back uh, however long. And then if they decide that they want to, um, they want to ask for a revision on a particular project, I can easily access it because I can access that client's folder and away we go. And then the same uh, for shows as well. So you can right click this one and you can uh, move to a folder or you can move, you can create a new folder. Same deal there. Um, so that's all really, really cool. And finally, for this section, I'm going to talk about something which I think is particularly unique. Um, excuse me, I was choking then. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and this is to do with, you can now customize the, the user interface of Studio One. So if I go to the view menu here, if I go down to customization, you've got some presets, views of what Studio One um, can look like if you so choose. Um, you can have basic, minimal, you can have a setup that just focuses on audio editing or you can create your own custom view. So you have, if we go in here and you can save this by the way, um, by clicking, so you can kind of uncheck any options and then you can, uh, you can save it and create your own little uh, customized view of Studio One. So let's say you aren't going to use half of these things. You can uncheck any of these that you don't think you're going to ever use uh, in the toolbar and then in the inspector you can uncheck any of these that you're not going to use um, and the same for transport you can uncheck or or check any of these ones and the same with the browser if like you know that you're not going to be working with any of the virtual instruments you can uncheck that and then the instruments tab will just not show up in the browser or if you know that you're never going to use the cloud because you're not a Persona Sphere member, you can uncheck that. Or if you're never going to buy things directly from the shop from within Studio One, which by the way, you've been able to do for quite a long time, uh, since Studio One 3, I think. Um, but if you're never going to need this feature, then you can uncheck that one as well. And then you can, um, you can save this and create this view of Studio One as your own personal customized view. And then you can click, if you decide, no, I don't like any of those changes, I can revert back to what it was before. So if I can click revert here, and then I can um, just make sure that everything is checked as it was before, which it is, and then I can close that because I like to be able to see everything. But not everybody will want to do that. Um, so going back to that menu, if you decide that you want just a very a minimal view of Studio One that just gives you basic recording and basic mixing features, then you can select this min this minimal preset and Studio One will be set that way. And I can show you how that will look uh, in a song um, later on in this video. Um, or in fact, in a standalone video, I think I will have this as well. Um, so that's the start page in a nutshell. The other thing I haven't talked about is the newsfeed used to say newsfeed and tutorials. It no longer does that. And that is because we now have the tutorials. And I just need to go quickly remember where they are. They are in the help menu. Here they are. Helpfully under tutorials. And then you can click this getting started with Studio One. And this will give you a bunch of helpful um, tutorials from um, uh, um, uh, software specialist uh, Gregor and Joe, and uh, you'll be able to get started um, watching those videos from inside of Studio One, and you'll be able to kind of follow along with what they're showing you so that you um, can follow in real time and have the same windows and same features open as they are showing in their videos. Um, 
So that is something that is brand spanking new for Studio One Six, and I think is going to be enormously helpful for people who are new to Studio One um, and want to learn more about how to use Studio One before they get started. So that essentially is it, I think, for... Um, oh, the only other thing I've not mentioned, I thought I said that, that this was it. I had forgotten one thing, and that is the um, installation now. So if I go to uh, Studio One, Studio One installation, we've now got a single installation window that covers everything. So you don't have to, um, like you did before, you had a separate window for installing separate things. You don't have that anymore. You've got this fantastic consolidated installation window with these options to check on the left. So we've got Studio One content, purchase content, Persona Sphere content, sound sets, extensions, and other items um, of file types. And then you've got here available updates. So if you have any extensions or sound sets or anything else that needs to be updated because it's, it's out of date, um, you can select these or you can select all of them and then you can update them. So I can click update these three items. These have actually been done recently, so we're okay on that front. And then this tab here shows you everything that you already have installed. And there's a green activate button here for items that require activation. Not every item will require activation, but if you want to activate everything at once, you can select all by clicking on the select all and then click activate and everything will be activated within Studio One. It will just go through it systematically until everything is done. Um, but if I go back to available downloads, you can go for three different types of installation. A minimal installation that just gets you the bare bones basics of what you need to be able to work in Studio One. Or there's this recommended installation that gives you some demos and some documentation as well. And then there's the full installation that basically selects absolutely everything. So there's 75 documents or 75 items, I should say here. And then you can install everything in one go. Um, and then there's also this install from file. So if you have things that are already downloaded, you can install those from file by locating to them in your, um, in your systems browser. So if you're on a Mac, it'll be in Finder or it'll be in, in Explorer on Windows. So there we go. That is absolutely definitively the start page for Studio One Six. All right. So in addition to all the things that we've just looked at, we've made a whole bunch of changes to the mixer and we've added a whole raft of new features here in the mixer, which is really, really exciting. One of which is fader flip which is extremely cool so what you need to do to get this to happen is you can right click on any send so let's choose for example this one here if i right click here um, i can now do flip faders to whole reverb and now the faders as you can see have all gone this dark green and any ones that are active on the whole reverb not only is the uh, the send itself highlighted, but the faders have flipped to um, the level of uh, send being sent to the whole reverb, and they are a light green. So if they are inactive, they are dark green, and if they are active, they are light green, which is very, very cool. And you'll also notice that there is a fader flip button over here. So I can switch from hall to room reverb, and we can see that there's a couple of things that have switched on over there, or I can go analog delay. And we can see that there's only one here. And again, the plugin is highlighted. Oh, there's one here as well, but this one is um, deactivated, it's turned off. Uh, or we can turn off fader flip altogether and just go back to normal mode, which is extremely handy. And this has been a major feature request for a very long time. And we've also got pop-up faders as well now for um, for pan effects and key mix sends. So, for example, if I um, double-click on the send level here, this opens this expanded view. So no more fiddling around with that tiny little um, pan thing 
at the bottom here, which was really, really hard to get to. And now it's just very, very easy. You can just move it wherever you want. And you can change the, the um, pre-fader on off. And if you click on this little down arrow here, look what we have. Lock pan to channel is an option that has been asked for for a very long time. And that is now available. Uh, which is extremely cool. And again, you've got the fader flip there as well. So this just makes it a lot easier to access your sends and send levels and send um, panning controls, as well as being able to lock the um, lock the pan to channel, which is very, very exciting. Um, so that is well worth you guys exploring. And then if you just want to get out of that expanded view, you just click away and it goes away. All right, so the other thing we're going to take a quick look at is some alternative panning modes for the channel panners. And this is great on the stereo bus channels over here. So if I was to double click the pan value here, this opens up an expanded view for that as well. But the cool thing here is that I can change it from the regular balance panner that we have had forever if I click this little down arrow, we now have a dual pan. And we also have a binaural pan as well, uh, which is uh, very cool. And we you can expand the width, uh, which is also very exciting. And again, you can kind of control click to, to set everything to zero. Um, but the dual pan controls are very exciting. You can just kind of wipe across however you want it to appear. And again, control click will set things back and then again, if you want to close that view, you just click away from it and it closes it. We also have sends on effects channels, as I think you probably had already spied, which is very cool because that means I can send this delay to this room reverb just by clicking the plus button and I can go and click that. And then I can change it to a prefader send if I want to which is tremendously exciting. This has actually been something that I have personally campaigned for for a long time. Uh, okay, so we're now gonna flip over to another song to explore some other equally fantastic options. Um, and this seems to have got stuck in the mode that I didn't want. <laughs> Maybe I forgot to turn it back, there we go. And then I'm gonna remove that there. We're going to flip over to a different song and we're going to feature this song again in a standalone video, which I'll talk about in a little while. So if I open up this song here, I can show you that we now have sidechain audio input for virtual instruments. So this is really, really exciting. And this works with VST2, VST3 and AU. So if you have an instrument like that, that requires an audio source, such as a sampler or a vocoder, you now have access to uh, the audio source within the mixer using a sidechain input. So this is very, very exciting. And the way you get to this is you need to um, open the editor and uh, you locate the sidechain menu in the editor. All right, so um, let's do that. What we're gonna, uh, what I'm gonna show you here is with this vocal track, I'm gonna set up a side. I have a side chain set up for this already. Um, to this other instrument here, this Mai Tai here. Um, and so now I can have this audio source, and you can see it says vocoder. So I'm gonna show this as well. So if I open this, we have this brand new plugin, which I'm gonna talk about in much more detail in a another standalone video which will feature um, another new plugin alongside this. We've also got a de -esser. and also I'm going to show you changes that we've made to the Pro EQ which are very, very exciting. But as if that's not enough, the vocoder on its own is tremendously exciting. So for this, if I click on this sources button, you can now see that I have a sidechain option here for the output of the Mai Tai to go to this vocal, to be controlled by this vocal. 
Um, and this is particularly exciting for me personally. I've wanted to do this for ages because the way the way you set up a, a vocoder before was really convoluted, so I, I, I just never really got into it. But now that Presonus has made their own vocoder, um, this is very, very easy to show you. So I'm closing that and I'm going to um, enable this track here. And I'm also going to record enable this here. And what I'm going to do is that wasn't meant to happen. Uh, ah, it's because that one's on. There we go. Hello. 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 Hey. Hello. And I'm controlling. The Mai Tai chords with my voice. This is really, really exciting. Yes, I have wanted to do that for a very, very long time. <laughs> so there you go. Um, whistle stop tour there of the vocoder. That will feature in a much fuller length video, uh, which will come in this series so if you have not subscribed please do hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell and that way you will ensure that you do not miss a thing from this series anyway i'm still talking through the vocoder so i need to turn that off all right so please subscribe please hit that notification bell and that way you will not miss any of the videos coming in this series all right, so that is how you can do the uh, sidechain audio input for virtual instruments. And I'm just going to show it just on the vocoder, just, just for the sake of brevity of this video. Um, but we have also, um, as you could see at least a little bit there, we've expanded some of the sidechain capabilities. Um, so you've got some different options now. So if I open this one here, uh, you will notice now that we have a send option as well as an output option. So the output uh, can be routed. So you can receive from the output of the selected channel um, into this plugin. But you can also create a send here as well. And as you can see, a send just appeared on the vocal channel. And I can make this pre-fader or post-fader, whichever I want. Um, and... Uh, this is just a really convenient and quick and easy way. It's even quicker than it was before, and it was already quick enough for um, how we've been able to do um, side chaining um, in Studio One Five in particular. But now with Studio One Six, it's even quicker. You just click on the source button, and you can set up your sends. You can set up your output super duper quick, and they just appear in your sends routing um, as you'd expect them to. So that's very, very exciting. Also, we have, as, as I showed you a little bit earlier, we've got the link option for bus and effects channel panning. So I need to go back to the other song to show you this. So let's go back to Dig Myself a Hole. Okay, so we're in this one now. And what I need to do here is I double click the send slider to open the pop-up editor. So um, let's do that. So, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, double click the send slider to open the pop-up editor to, um, so let's do that. There we go. And then in this option here, we've got lock pan to channel. I think I showed you this a little bit earlier. So, and then you can just click away to, to get rid of that. We've also got micro view controls for third party plugins, which is uh, very exciting. So I am going to find a channel on this song that has a third party plugin, which I don't think I do anymore because I think I swapped these all out for native ones. But um, if I was to go and grab something that is not native, from my effects browser. So if I went plug in Alliance, and if I went and got this Opto Compressor and put this on the trumpet here, and if I just close the edit window, and if I click expand, as you can see, I've now got all of these here. 
there's all the controls for the uh, Brainworks Opto compressor that I can adjust as I would, as I might want to. And I've also, I've also got options to enable or disable plugin nap directly from within the, the plugin insert there. So that is also extremely cool. So the other major, major feature request is for track presets. And finally, in Studio One Six, we have track presets. Now I'm going to this blank song for a particular reason. I'm going to add a track here in this song. Uh, and I'm going to add four VO tracks just, just because I can. And they're all going to appear in here. Now I've gone ahead and already done this, but as you can see in the effects uh, section here of the browser, there is a new section called Track Presets, which is really exciting. Now you will find in this section that there is a couple of folders that already have been added for you. So there's an audio one. And you've got presets for beats and vocals, drum kit, electric guitar, guitar and vocal. And then this, this is a vocal chain that I made from um, Dig Myself a Hole, my other song. And uh, basically I created it there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to drag and drop this guy onto that channel there. And you will note it has... Um, brought over the analog delay and the room reverb and the vocal bus from Dig Myself a Hole. We can go over to Dig Myself a Hole and we can scroll across and we can see that there's the Pro EQ and with the routing to the Vox bus, the lead Vox bus. If I go over to leads Vox bus, there's all those plugins on that bus. And if I go back over to the track presets demo, song, you'll see that all of that is now there. Um, so the very, very cool thing here is if I were to click on this channel here, uh, and let's say I wanted to copy and paste this channel setting onto these other VO channels, I can do that quite easily. I can click on here and I can go copy uh, channel settings, and then I can select this channel, hold shift, select this one, and I can paste the channel settings. Now, you can see that it hasn't changed the output to the lead vocal bus, but it has put in the Pro EQ settings, which are blank, because they are blank over here. And I did show you the Pro EQ very, very briefly. And as I said, I'm going to show you the Pro EQ uh, in a standalone video focusing on the new plugin. So I have flown over these very, very quickly. Um, but don't worry too much because I'm going to focus on the changes to the Pro EQ, the DSer, which is another new plugin, and also the vocoder in a separate standalone video. So don't worry about that. All right. So. Another fun thing that we have done, and I'm going to go over to the other song for this, is if I go into the um, options here, we have a new option called Channel Icons. And you will now see that there are a bunch of channel icons that have now populated this song. Because, I mean, these are ones that I made. And I'm going to show you in the other blank song how you can make these in just a second. But I wanted to show you how you can, um, what you, what the possibilities are. Um, so you've got channel icons, but you've also got track icons to correspond with those as well. Track icons. And there they all are. Including drums and overheads there and everything else that you might possibly want. This has been a feature request for quite a long time as well. Uh, and these are extremely cool. I like these. This is pretty. I didn't think I would, I'll be honest. You know, when people were making feature requests for track icons, I thought, yeah, I'm not sure I want those. I'm not sure that it's, it's just going to look 
tacky and cheesy, I was wrong. These are really nice. I really like the way that the guys over in Hamburg have designed these. These are lovely. All right, so I'm going to show you how you can create those. Let's go over to the blank song. And we will show channel icons. And you'll see that these have already appeared because these are basically copied channel settings from this one channel here. But let's clear the board. Let's go and get rid of all these channels. So we will remove selected tracks. And we will create four more channels. And we'll go back into here. And I am going to remove this bus here. And remove. And I'm going to remove these as well. And remove that one. All right, so we are back to our basic. So what you need to do to create to create the track icons is double click. And then up pops this list and you've got an all section and this shows you everything that is possibly available for a track icon currently i'm sure that this will be added to uh eventually um and you've also got options for different families of instruments or groups of instruments so we've got brass here we've got drums we've got guitars including pedal steel, and we've got some amps and full stacks, combos, half stacks, basses, banjos. And we've got sitar, shamisen, and a ukulele as well. And in the keyboards, we've got all of these, including organ, synth, vibraphone, which is technically a keyboard instrument, although it's technically also a percussion instrument, piano. We've got keyboards and accordion, clavinet. The only thing missing here, for my opinion, is an electric piano. That would be nice. Then we've got this other one. So if you need kind of other icons, like a video track, which by the way, is now something that we have in Studio One Six, we have a dedicated video track. I'm going to get to that in a little moment. And of course, you can have the 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 rock horns, hand gesture if you really want it. And then there's percussion, there's strings, there's vocals, including a wireless mic and woodwinds, including uh, some cool things like bassoon, bass clarinet, baritone sax, alto sax, clarinets, flutes, oboes, saxophone, woodwind section in general. Um, and then you can reset if you need to. So uh, for this one, we want vocals. So let's go to vocals and we will have lead vocals. And then let's say these ones are backing vocals. And I think I can just hold shift and I can select all three of those. And I can go for vocals or I can go for choir uh, or I can go for crowd, whichever you prefer. Any of those will, will do quite nicely. And you will notice we've done those in the channels, but when I go to track icons, the same ones appear in the uh, in the track view as well as in the mixer view, which is very very handy as well. We've also got um, some additions to uh, the channel visibility, so that you can um, show and hide different things. So let's go back over to dig myself a hole and we'll get the mixer open and so in here what we need to do to show the the visibility is we need this visibility button open and then there's your channel list and then you've got as we had before waves virtual instruments effects buses vcas auxiliaries and i forget what this one is Remote bank. Okay. If I click on these three dots here, I can show all channels. I can show any that are soloed and any that are muted. And I can hide any that are muted and any that are, um, are uh, disabled. 
So I don't have any soloed at the moment. So let's go and solo a few at random. Let's see, what else can we solo? There we go. So I've soloed a few. So if I go over to here and if I now go show solo tracks, only the ones that are soloed are now viewed. And of course, I can customize a little bit. If I go, well, you know what, I've got the trumpet but I want and the tenor sax, but I also want to see the baritone sax as well. I can stick that one in as well. Um, albeit it's not muted. Um, and then if I go undo visibility change, um, now we're just back to all of those that are just soloed. Uh, and then I can go back to all channels again, and I can undo all the solos. Show muted channels. All right, so let's just go and mute these ones here. And then I can go show muted channels. Bingo. Only the muted channels are shown. And then I can go back to all, and then I can undo the all mute. So those um, are going to be useful uh, channel visibility options right there. And finally, um, in this section of this video, we're going to look at the export mixdown options because now we've got target loudness options for export mixdown. So if I go to song, export mixdown, you'll now see I can select the loudness options here. And there's a whole range of these, including YouTube Tidal, Spotify SoundCloud, EBU um, R128, and so on and so forth. And you can adjust to your taste, or you can just turn that off if you don't want to. Um, so that's handy for those of you that are exporting directly to SoundCloud, which you might be. If you're doing that, then you would want to just select SoundCloud and the max loudness will be set to minus 14 LUFS and the true peak will be negative one dB. And all of this is applied whilst it is mixing down, just like it is for the project page. All right, we're now on to my personal favorite fe set of features for Studio One Six. And as a songwriter, these are fantastic and they are a wonderful addition to Studio One. And uh, the great thing is, is that this particular set of features is also completely interactive with Notion as well, which I'm particularly excited about because I love Notion. I've been using Notion since about 2016 and it's awesome that you can enter lyrics into Notion that's always been awesome, but now you can enter lyrics into Studio One as well. And uh, I have been wanting this for a very long time, and I'm glad that we now finally have it. As you can see up here in the global visibility, there is a lyrics track, which is fantastic. You'll also notice that there is the video track there as well, which is something equally fantastic in my personal opinion. Um, and as I said, there's going to be a separate standalone video that will do uh, an overview of the video track and the video track features because um, it's really, really cool. And I want to keep that separate and be able to go into that in a little bit more depth than I could do here in this video. Um, but the lyrics track is fantastic. As you can see, I have it added here in my song and it looks like a bunch of words are kind of all jumbled up but basically what I did to get these lyrics in here I could have just typed them in and I could have just lined them up which you can do in the lyrics track you can just type them in and line them up where you want them uh, so that they are in sync with the, your vocal track for your song you can certainly do that or if you already have existing lyrics then you can uh, basically um, copy and paste them directly into this lyrics track. They'll all be a bit bunched up when you do that. 
And then what you'll need to do is just listen through your song and just move each phrase to where it, where each line needs to be. And then you can just drag and drop that line in the lyrics track until you've completed your whole song, which is um, what I have done here with this song. It didn't take me more than about five minutes to complete for this song. If your songs are longer than mine, then it might take you a little bit longer. Um, you know, if you're the kind of person that, that writes kind of Bob Dylan kind of opuses, then yeah, it will take you a little bit longer. But this is just a very simple um, song with a couple of verses and a chorus. So it was dead easy to line up. But we don't just have a lyrics track. We also have a lyrics display so that you can uh, you can see your lyrics. And if you want to uh, perform your vocals or do a fresh vocal take, and you want to be reminded of your lyrics, then you can certainly do that. So if we go to the view menu here, you'll see this option that says lyrics display. And when I click this, this fantastic box opens up, um, which is awesome. I love this feature. And the cool thing here is you can, uh, you can resize this. Um, so let's make it, let's make it that big for now. And you can also click this uh, window here. If you click this wrench tool, there's this ahead thing. And that basically means that the line is going to light up in blue just ahead of when you need to sing it. You can either have it so that it happens exactly in sync, um, providing you've moved the lyrics around on the uh, lyrics track to get them so that, oops, so that, to get them so that they are in sync. Uh, in this particular case, it sets it in quarter notes. So I've set this so that um, a quarter note before the line, the line goes blue. You can change the alignment. So at the moment I've got it centered, but you could have it set on the left uh, if you want to do that. You can also change the font size. So I've set this to quite large because when I am recording this, I will probably be standing much further back. Uh, you can expand this to whatever size you want, and then you can adjust the box until um, they kind of fit. The cool thing is, is that these will auto scroll as you're going through the song. So you don't have to keep reaching for your mouse as you're doing your performance uh, to get the lyrics to scroll up. It does it by itself. If we click this pencil tool, which is the edit mode, a couple of things happen. Number one, there is a ruler, which is set in bars. And you can see exactly where each line is going to appear and which bar number it's going to appear. And you can move individual words. You can correct spelling mistakes. You can move individual words so that they land on a particular beat in the bar. And the grid is set to quarter notes at the moment. Or you can set it to 30 seconds, 16th, or you can set it to bars or note events. Uh, and I'll explain the note events bit in just a minute. Um, or you can turn the grid off entirely and just enter your text here or adjust your text here. So what I want to do is I want to turn that off and I want to keep this in this centered mode because when I look at lyrics, I like to look at it in poetry form, which is what I've got set here. So I'm going to play a little bit of this song. This is um, called Dig Myself a Hole, which I released as a single um, about three years ago. Um, and it's a fun little um, kind of shuffle blues song. But watch what happens to the lyrics uh, as we go through this song. Holding all the words, cards I feel two feet tall. I'll stand and shout, no holding back. Do or die, gonna dig myself a hole. Oh, do or die, gonna dig myself a hole. Now I'm hanging tough, 
And I'm never falling back. All right, I think you get the idea. As you can see, um, by following that, when you are about to sing a line, it's blue. And then when that line is done, it goes gray. And otherwise, they are white, like they are now. And then they turn blue as necessary. And you did see a little bit of how it scrolls, which is incredibly useful for when you are uh, recording a vocal and you want to get this, um, you want to get a really good performance. You want to know when you need to sing the next line and all of that. So this is a very, very cool, exciting feature. But we're not quite done with lyrics just yet. Because if I go over to the tracks preset demo song again I've added a presence instance here and I've just entered some notes in relatively at random and if I open this automation track here you can see that we have velocity note control we've got all the things that we're used to seeing but we've also got this lyrics option here which is very very exciting so I can um, enter some lyrics into this here by selecting this note here and then you double click and I could say something like I'm just improvising these lyrics by the way so I can say I and then I can go space and that takes me on to the next note I can go um, hang on A M for am and then space Here, hang on, I think that added an extra H. Here, space, and I can say four, and then U. And I pressed an extra space. I didn't want to do that. And I've made a mistake there, as you can see. That's fine. I can tidy that up. There we go. And now I have all my lyrics in the note editor. So that is very, very exciting as well. And one thing I've not checked is whether those actually appear in the lyrics track, which they don't. That's interesting to note. They don't actually appear in the lyrics track. Um, that's interesting. I did not know that. So, uh, so there we go. So you can now enter lyrics into the note editor, um, and they will also appear, as you can see, in the score editor. I am here for you. Slightly funky rhythm, but we'll not worry about that too terribly much. All right, so there we go. That is lyrics in Studio One Six. So I hope you have found this um, whistle stop tour through the features of Studio One Six. Okay, whistle stop tour is maybe stretching a little bit because this was actually quite a lengthy video, but I hope that you have found it useful and helpful. And what I'm going to do with this is you can either watch the whole thing from start to finish. Um, as one long video, but I'm also going to break out each section of this video into its own little video. So you can watch the individual sections of this video if you want to as a separate video. Plus, as I've said, there will also be um, three extra standalone videos to accompany this overview um, that will cover things like the new plugins that includes the vocoder and uh, the lyrics track will go into a little bit more depth and also the Sphere collaboration tools as well. So we'll cover all of those in the extra standalone videos. Um, so I hope you found this very helpful. If you have, please hit the like button. If you would like to, please also subscribe. I would appreciate it very much if you did. And if you enjoy this content and you want to check out more of the content that I have coming for Studio One Six, including some live streams that I'm going to do where we can go through some of these features in a little bit more depth in a live stream context where you can ask your questions in the chat and interact a little bit more directly, then please also hit the notification bell as well as the subscribe button. And that way you'll not miss a thing. 
Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video really soon. Bye for now.